All right. All right so, I was going to say, I guess we can give it a few more minutes, Carolyn. Um, Do you expect yes, anyone else? Have you had RSVPs? I had people jump on uh, prior to uh, the start of it. So I didn't know if uh, they were planning oh. on jumping back on. And I know a few people had said they'd wanted to. Um, oh, okay. Well, whenever you, whenever you want to ring the bell, I'm ready and it'll be recorded. So even if they, if they miss it live, then they can listen to the recording. Where will the recording play? Uh, well, uh, I'm sure Shane will send it to me as he's recording it for us right now. Uh, and then I can forward it to you as well as I'll post it up on my Facebook page and potentially Tom, if it's acceptable, the Lamoille County page. We'll put it on the Lamoille page for sure. Sounds good. Okay. If not the Stowe page as well. While we have a break in the action, I thought I'd share with you the new Lamoille County Republicans logo that we just rolled out this past week. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. That? Like that's it. beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. We tried to capture, you know, the spirit of the area, which is, of course, beautiful. And um, help me with the name of that mountain there, Farron. That's a beautiful mountain. I think it's maybe Sterling Mountain that you always see when you're in your area of the woods there. Or I guess maybe you see uh, uh, the backside of uh, Stowe, don't you? Or Mansfield. Right. We said the backside of Mansfield. Otherwise, you know, I'd have uh, Spruce Peak is there as well. Right. Or Madonna Mountain, right? Yep. Um, but... Let's just go ahead and get started um, as we're already recording. So hopefully everyone loved our little dialogue there. <laughs> um, I'm Farron Womble, candidate for Memorial <coughs> 3 state representative. And with me, I'm Miss Carolyn Brannigan. Hello, Carolyn Brannigan. Who's running for I'm running for Vermont State Treasurer. I live in uh, Georgia, Vermont, which is in Franklin County, north of Burlington. The town borders on Lake Champlain. We're about 10 miles from Canada. So we're in the Champlain Valley. And uh, in fact, I can look out my window and see uh, Mount Mansfield. So I think I must be looking right across Lamoille County when I do that. So uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I've been a Vermonter my whole life. So thank you for inviting me here tonight. Farron, what towns are in the district that you're running to represent? What towns? Well, the is Waterville and Cambridge. Oh, yeah, good. So that's the district that Rich Westman used to represent. Now he's the senator. Uh, and um, a wonderful guy who passed away recently, uh, also represented Bernie. Cambridge. Bernie Jeskowitz, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, I was like, did you know something? I didn't know about Rich. But no, 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 mind. Bernie Jeskowitz. Uh, I served with him. I served with both those guys, uh, actually, in the, in the House and with Rich in the Senate. I served seven terms in the House representing my hometown. For part of that time, uh, I, I represented a two-town district, Georgia and Fairfax. And then I also served one term in the Senate. So, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, thanks for asking me to come tonight. Yeah, I, I feel like the treasurer is a position that not a lot of folks talk about. And when we really get into some of the big issues of what our budget is doing, especially this year with COVID, a big hit is the pension plan. And as a vested member of the Vermont pension system, to me, it's very important to keep it around. Um, well, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I have some ideas. I wanted to kind of spitball with you, Carolyn, and then also to hear some of your ideas as treasurer, things that we could do for not only our budget, um, but the pension plan. Yeah, well, for me, the pension plan, uh, which is the retirement fund, uh, that's a, a, a big issue. It always has been. During the time that I served in the House, I was, uh, for most of the, the time, uh, on the Ways and Means Committee. And every year we heard from the treasurer, uh, Jeb Spaulding, and then Beth Pierce, uh, about a number of issues because it's part of the um, directive for the Ways and Means Committee to look into revenues coming in to the state and also obligations, bills that the state has to pay. And um, the pension, keeping the pension fund uh, going and um, 
caring for our retirees, our retired uh, state workers and retired public school teachers, uh, that's the main uh, point of the retirement fund. We pay their pension and also their health care costs out of that fund. So uh, we really have a, a moral and legal obligation to keep that fund going. Um, and the, the deficit there has been uh, present for quite a while. Um, I remember before, uh, long before I got involved in the legislature at all, I was serving on the school board here in town and the, the current state senator at the time uh, came in and, and was uh, quite upset about the short, shortfall to the teacher's pension uh, that was going on at that time. That was a number of years ago. Uh, this is not a new thing, but it's something that we have to take care of. We have to um, uh, get this squared away, stabilized. If we don't, then one of two things will happen. Either uh, the, the beneficiaries of that pension will lose their benefits uh, uh, or their, their cost to contribute will increase, or the taxpayer's uh, tax obligation will increase. And I don't think anyone wants any of those uh, scenarios to happen. So we've got to act like grown-ups here and admit that the retirement fund is in trouble and figure out what we can do to, to square it around. Agreed. Um, now, I'm on the law enforcement section of it, so I don't know how much it differs entirely from the uh, teacher's pension. Uh, so I'll, I'll admit ignorance on that. Um, oh, you're not ignorant. I, I think what, to shorten that up, I think what happens is uh, each of those groups have their own contract. So each of the benefits they get are slightly different, but, um, but they all come, they're all paid for out of the retirement fund. So everyone is affected. The only people who aren't affected, and I, I try not to mention them, except to explain that the municipal employees those are the towns, the people who drive truck for the town, work at the town office, the town employees. They, they also are included in, in um, the retirement fund, but their section of the retirement fund, fund is holding its own. Everyone has been contributing in according to the formula right along. It has never been shorted. And so from everything I can see, every report I've read, the municipal employees are okay. The people who are in question here and that I wanna protect are the state employees and also our public school teachers. Right. Now, um, I know with our law enforcement one, you're vested after five years. And is that the same? So for folks who don't know, that means after I've served my five years, um, now, after I retire, I'll draw the same monthly pension payment uh, monthly until I'm deceased. So is that very similar to the teachers or is that a little bit different? I don't know uh, when the, the point of uh, being vested is for teachers or for state employees. I don't know the details of each contract. I didn't know that the policemen were uh, vested after five years. But at some point, you're, you're right, Farron, that at some point, each of those employees becomes vested. And that means they've got enough money in there to really have an interest in it. And so uh, we need to make sure that, that we make good on the agreement we made with them initially. Um, I think before they reach that point where they're vested, we can also change the agreement. Um, so after they become vested, I think then the agreement for their retirement um, uh, for our, our contribution into their retirement and the benefits that they get, that all becomes set. It's, it's a done deal at that point. That's my understanding. Right. Now, why is it we've never looked at for the state, or maybe we have, or you, you would know better than I, um, have we not looked at making it into, say, more of a 401k? So I'm putting in for myself, and my employer is matching it. And then, you know, whenever that money is all drawn, at the end of the time, then I would be out of money and no longer a taxpayer burden. Is that something that's been kicked around or has it been? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. Uh, these are negotiated agreements. And so Correct. far, this uh, 
a, a benefit, a defined benefit plan that's in the retirement fund agreement, that's what's been holding. But you're right, the 401k plans are uh, you, what most of uh, businesses uh, arrange nowadays for their employees. My husband's business does that. Um, it's a retirement plan that the the employee has a lot of control over. So there's a set contribution on behalf on 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 the part of the employer, and then the employee uh, can control where and how it's invested, right along. So that that's uh, that may be where we're headed. But if we are, we need to make sure that that's an agreement all the way around the table, just like the current agreement is. Correct. Do you think it would help us out? So we're sitting at what a four point five. Is it billion or million? Billion. And I, I, I heard um, earlier in the month um, that by, by the end of this fiscal year, that amount will likely increase by another billion dollars. It's huge. It's out of control. We have to get that under control. We can't afford that exponential growth. Um, so we, we've really got to get a handle on it. It's already draining the general fund. More, year, more money each year is being uh, drained out of the general fund uh, to, to pay this amount that we owe our retirees. Correct, so that's what, I had heard that as well, that we were adding another billion dollars. And yeah. I mean, at some point in time, we have to figure out how to um, address it. So one of the things that I'd been kicking around personally was the 401k option. Um, mm -hmm. as well as maybe changing the terms of vestment, such as, um, you know, it's not hard for a person to start a job and work there for five years, six years, and then go somewhere else. We, you know, mm -hmm. the idea of pension was is you were there for life, more or less, uh, and now mobility yeah. really helps us out. So I didn't well, that's one, of the, that's one of the purposes of this fund. I don't mean to interrupt you, uh, but oh, you're okay. um, to, 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 uh, a retirement fund exists in part to stabilize your workforce, to make it so that people aren't coming and going all the time. They want to stay because they want to earn up to the point where they can have that benefit uh, uh, when they retire at 20 or 25 or 30 years, whatever it is. Um, so uh, it's definitely something that we want to do a good job in. And um, it's, uh, it, this is why I say we've got to get a handle on this. We've got to stop just talking about it and wringing our hands. We have to do something that will stabilize the whole thing. So why is it then that our municipal and town employees are, that fund is doing so well compared to say our state employees and teachers? Do you have it, any handle on that one? My understanding is that it's been uh, adequately funded all along from day one. It isn't a whole lot of money because there are much fewer people in that part of the fund who are benefiting than are in the either the state workers or uh, the public school teachers. We Together, those uh, state employees and the public school teachers are about 35,000 people. Uh, it's many more people than what work for the towns. So it's so the, right. the municipal employees is an easier group to deal with. And the state police and the, uh, you know, those guys, the law enforcement are all included in the state employees part. Correct. Um, other agencies such as sheriff's departments are in the municipal, um, just a little food for thought. Uh, so they have the 30 year retirement, which is my understanding a, a negative impact for law enforcement agencies because people use them as feeder agencies to go to better. But that's a different conversation for a different time. Um, You're saying that so yeah. they use the, the sheriff's department as feeder agencies for other uh, law enforcement agencies? It's is that what happens? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So they I guess jump in. That and makes then, sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at Karen, least that's can what I ask I've you a question? From, uh, of course. Um, yeah. I don't know if this was already asked and, and answered, but uh, maybe a chance to emphasize. Carolyn, how long do you think it is before we reach a point of no return with the pension fund? No return, huh? Anything can happen. We have already reached the point where the fund is having to draw more and more money out of the general fund. Each, the, so the, the pension fund, 
the retirement fund rather, is already draining money on an annual basis out of the general fund. That means that the programs, the state programs, the general fund usually funds like child care, uh, early education, uh, ro various kinds of road repair, uh, uh, emergencies like um, Hurricane Irene, that kind of funding uh, is the money out there available for those projects is less and less. So, so it's already happening that the general fund is, is getting smaller because of its, um, it, it, it's had, it has to fund uh, the retirement fund in addition to everything else it does. It shouldn't be that way. Um, it was written in the, in the original contract for the retirement fund that if, um, uh, if there was a circumstance in a particular year where the benefits didn't grow in the market as where they were estimated to, to grow, that then they would take the difference out of the general fund, but it wasn't meant to be a major source of the fund. So that's where we're at right now. Um, point of no return, it depends on, on uh, how much risk you want to take. We're, we're pretty close. Yeah, thank you. And I mean, it's, it's not a surprise that, you know, we, we have to make up that massive gap when we've got uh, expectations of 7% annual growth that, you know, I, I, I guarantee <laughs> yeah. if, if you're able to offer that 7% growth to, to people, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be changing their, <laughs> you know, their yeah. investment specialist at that point. But, you know, it's, it's not realistic. Right, right. So, being that was in and uh, so being that was in the original contract, has that stip stipulation stayed the same since that original contract, or have we seen a shift from it away from that idea to? Yeah, uh, do you, do you mean the um, as far as of using the general fund as a safety net? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think that's always been the case. I think that's always been the case. I don't think it's changed. Uh, now I know the numbers for law enforcement is this is about a 13.5% for a law enforcement agency to put into, to donate towards its fund. And then the employee is putting in about 6.847% themselves into their retirement fund as far as the one plan that I was on. Um, What's the breakdown do you know for teachers? I don't know those details to the contract. All I know is the big picture. I know that we are in trouble. I know where the revenue is coming from. I know some things that we can uh, do to stop the, the bleeding, stop the outflow. But um, I mean, I don't know uh, definite. I haven't been negotiating the contract. I, I think that's done by um, by a group of people from the from the um, investment committee, and they joined together with members of the union. Uh, so they okay. would have a, a couple of police officials there, um, uh, teachers union, um, uh, state workers. They have a unionized contract as well. So they'd all be meeting together, sitting around the table, coming up with the agreement. The legislature has no say in that. So uh, they get handed the agreement, and that's what we have to pay. That's how, and we pay it through the Pay Act. So, so what are um, some of your big ideas as to of how we actually change this to make it a sustainable fund for myself and others my age? Well, this can't be fixed quickly. It's no. taken about 30 years to get into the situation that we're in right now. So it's going to take a long time into the future before we're stabilized again. But some things we can do are, the, the first thing I want to start doing right off is um, uh, all, all budgeting we, that's done at the state house. we ought to have an idea of how much money is going to be taken uh, out of the retirement fund to run, this, to run the budget. How many new employees? Um, so how much additional cost for the retirement fund are we going to incur? Uh, so I, I think that, that that needs to, to be understood um, before the legislators vote on something. I think, I think really, I'm not, I'm not blaming anyone for this. Um, I think the treasurer herself has 
been very competent uh, at doing her work, trying to do the best. <clears throat> I think if there's anyone to blame, it's the legislature. So the legislators have to thoroughly understand this. And as I've said before, you know, it's as dry as toast. People kind of glaze over when we talk about, well, the, the income from the retirement fund and the, the payouts are going to equal this and blah, blah. But we have to understand it, at least the people on the money committees, so that we know that we're, um, we're, we're making it balance. So um, uh, getting a report on how much each, each uh, addition to the budget, each employee added, how much addition that will cost us. Um, uh, we need to uh, design an annual stress test. That's, that's the stress test um, is uh, something that an actuary will design for us, and its job is specifically to um, estimate how much um, um, stability is in the fund given the ups and downs, the swings of the market. Um, Something just happened on my computer. Can you still see me? I can. can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to go then. Um, uh, <laughs> computer problems I had, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Anything can happen, you know. Uh, so the stress test is something that's used by several other states. Uh, if it's done on an annual basis, then if you're hit with a with a deep drop drop in the market or a pandemic or war or you know a bad hurricane you have an idea of what your what the performance of your fund is going to be for that year and you can make some kind of a of an adjustment so that your people are protected your beneficiaries the people that you're working for who are going to be using this fund in their uh in their retirement years um then i i think that we ought to uh make sure that our um our governance of the fund is uh, operating the way it should. So we have the right people on the governing committees. So uh, we need to have uh, some taxpayers, some financial experts, union members, um, all those people need to get together, sit around the table, get where they know one another to the point where they trust each other. That's extremely important. And then come up with some, some alternatives for how we can make the thing work. Um, we need a, a standardized process of choosing rates of return and investment assumptions. State investments should not be um, based on specific political or whim ideas. Uh, they've got to be long-term uh, investments that they know are going to be stable. These things operate for 30 years. My brother was a state policeman. He retired after 28 years. The money that he's now collecting as a, um, as a retiree was invested at this point more than 30 years ago. These, this money it lasts for a long time. Uh, I have other, other ideas too. I, I guess um, one I, I definitely want to mention is the cost sharing. Uh, we should find a way to uh, share the increased cost between the state, so the state is the employer, and the state workers and teachers, those are the employees. So um, a, an improved system uh, would be especially beneficial, especially given what we've seen in the last 10 years regarding health care. Uh, I know um, in, at, at my age, I pay a lot of attention to the increasing costs of health care, although I'm not collecting much yet, but I will. And in the last 10 years, uh, health care costs have, have exploded. If that continues, then we have to pick up that cost in the retirement fund because it pays out pension and health care. And I think we can do it, but what we need to do is get where we can talk to one another, collect a committee uh, of people who can work together, a little give and take, uh, perhaps um, coming up with some kind of a, a contribution plan, like you mentioned originally, the 401k, instead of um, a benefit plan, which is what we have now. Uh, but I don't know, if we go down that road, it will be by mutual agreement. Uh, understanding the uh, the results of, of um, what's going to happen if we don't. Uh, everybody needs to be fully informed, and I don't think they are now. A lot of legislators right now only vaguely know that we have a retirement fund. To, uh, next year, they're going to know big time when, if, if that billion-dollar shortfall becomes real. Um, 
So, well, I mean, with COVID, I mean, you mentioned pandemic is part of that stress test. Um, yeah. We already know that our 2022 budget is going to be abysmal. And yeah, yeah, it's going to be know, very difficult. My question I'm is. Wanna, well, I have a lot of faith in the in the in the money committees at the at the state house. They they all for the most part know what they're doing, and they they know where um, you know where the money is, uh, what the rainy day funds are, uh, how much revenue is coming in, and where the shortfalls are right now currently. Um, so they they understand all that stuff, and they're the ones we need to go to. So uh, they're the ones that that need to be well versed in all of this. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. No, it's okay. I, you know, it was just one of those things where I, you know, I, I'm looking at the pension and understanding that the pension is a big thing that we do have to talk about. Um, and thinking again, like I said, we are going to continue to have people retiring. We've had early retirees due to COVID. Um, so I'm, yeah. I'm almost afraid yeah. to see what's going to happen to that pension plan in the coming years. Well, I know you're right. I, I personally know a lot of teachers my age who are um, having second thoughts about returning to the classroom. And, right. and I, I think that we may see a lot of women in their 50s retiring, um, men and women, because you get to that age and, and um, you're perhaps at the point where you really don't have to work anymore although you may enjoy it and you love seeing the children, it, is it worth your life? Is it worth, um, you know, getting sick from COVID and, and dying? And, and so these are, these are heavy topics. Yeah, I think right. you're right. We're, we're going to see a big increase uh, to that role, that, that role of retirees. Did I tell you there are 35,000 retirees right now uh, in the plan, uh, more teachers, it's about half, but more teachers than state employees. Yes, yes. Um, which, I mean, we do know that the state of Vermont is one of the largest employers with an average of 100 and what, 146 employees in the state per 10,000 people. Uh, when compared nationally, it's generally around the 86 mark. So we're close to double, which huh. is huge. Good. Um, I didn't know that, but thank you. <laughs> that is a, a fun good little girl. fact. Um, <laughs> yeah, good, good for you. My account is telling me that it's about to be picked out. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, no. Ah, so I thought yeah. we were going to have an hour. We don't have an hour? Oh, bummer. Apparently, we get 40 minutes. So, any okay. last thoughts that, Carolyn, that you can share with us? Um, I have a website, carolynbranigan.com. Uh, on that website, you, you can find a lot of information if you want to wade through, but some of it are, are little cute videos uh, that help explain the way the, the retirement fund works. Feel free to go there uh, and you can get more information. And I know the people in my community are already receiving their ballots, the, the ones that are yes. due on uh, November 3rd. Vote. This is the most important election of our lives. Be sure you vote. Whichever way you vote, make sure you cast the ballot. Uh, we need it. We need What we need is to get a good read of what the people of Vermont want. Whatever the, the outcome is, fine, we can deal with it, but we need to know what people want, which direction. So now's your chance. I just got a Tom. notice that the meeting had been upgraded to last longer. I don't know if you got that notice as well, Farron. No. Oh. Well, hey, apparently we can keep going. That's yeah, let's go till they shut us off. Oh, okay. we'll Goodness. just go. <laughs> uh, can I ask a question while I have the floor? Of course, Tom. Um, Carolyn, if you're not elected, do you have any idea what the plan would be by the people who presently, uh, you know, the present treasurer and, and the legislative body if they would address this at all this this year? Is there any plan you're aware of? No, well, I've been talking to legislators as well as uh, regular citizens uh, ever since um, I, I declared my candidacy in, in about the 1st of June. Um, I, I know that the legislators are starting to understand that there's a problem. Um, they, they, uh, you know, change is hard. 
no, nobody wants to change. No one wants to admit that what they're doing isn't working well. But this is important. It's beyond ourselves here that we're going to uh, be uh, da inflicting damage if, if we don't get this straightened out. These are going to be elderly people 30 years down the road who are depending on this legally binding agreement that's been made by the state of Vermont. We have to be grown-ups at this point when we start uh, investing their savings that they're going to collect. It's extremely important. Think of your parents. I mean, th this, this is a, an agreement we have to make good on. We can't just say, well, somebody else will do it. We are on deck. We have to take care of it. So if, if I don't get elected, uh, I mean, the world isn't going to come to an end. If Beth doesn't get elected, the world isn't going to come to an end. But what, when, when things will get bad is if there is no longer any money anywhere for uh, paying out these pensions and health care costs that, that these elderly people are incurring. We need to make sure we're well prepared, and we can be. For, you know, for nearly 25 years, the fund was not funded. It, it, it was funded at around 60% of what the actuaries were telling us should be. Uh, so it, this, this is something that we've known for a long time is going to happen. And uh, I, there was a great report written by, um, by the Vermont Business Roundtable. It came out last uh, December in 2019 it's on the it's on the computer if you type in you know where you do your searches vermont business roundtable report it'll come right up and you can read through it's only about 30 pages long it's not a bad read but go through it it explains very well how the retirement fund came to be in this difficult situation they also um suggest some uh some steps that the legislature could take and uh, they're not blaming the treasurer either, nor am I. They're saying the legislature is the one who really has to take the bull by the horns. We can't go on any longer. No. I kind of went on and on and on there with that answer. I hope I, I uh, zeroed in on your question. That was great. So if for some reason, say absolute worst case scenario, and I actually have that uh, report that you just referenced, uh, Carolyn, printed out. I've got to sit down and read it in the next couple Good. of days. Perfect. Um, Most legislators have not read it. It's been oh, out wow. six more than it's been out what nine months, and they they haven't read it. I've they also read the whole decarbonization methods analysis study. That's some good reading. Some 128 pages. Boy, Nothing talk about dry to as toast. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Um, yeah. But so you, you brought up if for some reason we don't have it, we have this legally binding contract in place now. If we keep drawing from the general fund, correct me if I'm wrong, but that means we're going to have programs shutting down. We're going to have other folks. It's not going to only impact our retirees. It's going to impact folks who live on government assistance or our uh, nonprofit organizations who rely on grants. Am I right on that? Well, already some of those folks have suffered. Um, the state colleges have suffered uh, because yes. there, there wasn't the money there that they needed uh, you know, for a number of uh, uh, issues. And um, the, the shortfall is already there. And so we're already suffering. It's just that people don't know about it because they don't miss what they didn't have. Uh, but we as legislators can see what the needs are and we can see where, uh, where, the, where the need is remaining and we can't fill it because we have to pay off the retirement fund. So what will happen is, um, uh, it, to, I think more likely than dropping programs entirely would be that taxes get increased. And Which I know, know I we can't afford. <laughs> oh boy, I was on the Ways and Means Committee for 12 years. Most of that time I was the vice chair. So I know a lot about revenue. We don't have the capacity out there to raise taxes and cover that kind of shortfall. Uh, we, we just can't do it. I, I know people say, well, let's tax the rich people. There aren't enough rich people in the state of Vermont to cover that kind of shortfall. There really are. The aren't. rich can also leave. It's you know it's well, one of those. They have the up. ability. Yeah, they, they have can the ability. buy a plane ticket. Sure. Uh, yeah. So we don't want to chase them out of the state. That's for sure. No, <laughs> no we don't. Um, but it is our low, 
uh, and I always say it nicely when I think of it, I'm like, we can do as much as we want because we are trying to help out people. But when we sit there and add more taxes, more taxes, more taxes, we're actually harming and driving out that lower middle income or upper low income folks. Those are the ones who are leaving. And those right. are generally the younger generation. Those of us, you know, getting out of college, trying to stay, keep around, stick around, but yeah. you know, we all also want to have a life too. So taxes, yeah, every, taxes, taxes are bad. Every state is, uh, you know, looking for law enforcement, people who are skilled in law enforcement. You know, you, you could easily find a, a job in another state. I have, um, you know, my, my children are about your age and uh, each of them could easily find uh, jobs in other states. I beg them not to go, but who knows what the future will bring. Shane, you came back. You're That's in Vermont. Right. Hooray. There's uh, one. I actually <laughs> never left, but you know, I, I really, I really wanted to for the longest yeah. time growing up. And it was Johnson State College at the time. Now it's NVU that made me decide to stay here. I, you know, I, I came up and visited the, the campus. And up until yeah. then, I was looking at all sorts of places out of state to go. And, you know, the sad part is it would have been less expensive for me to attend SUNY Plattsburgh than it was for yeah. me to attend Johnson for the, the couple of years that I did. And so, I mean, you mentioned the, the state colleges, um, you know, Farron's running in Cambridge, but I'm running in Johnson. So it's, uh, you know, very much a, a part of both of our communities. And uh, the fact that it has been so chronically underfunded over the years, uh, it, it's really, you know, it, it was a very scary moment for our community when Jeb Spaulding Definitely. came out with his proposal earlier this year. And yeah, uh, I bet. So I, I just wanted to say, I'm very glad that you are running and uh, you know, that you are so laser focused on this issue because you are, you're dead on um, that, you know, if, if this isn't something that we, you know, look ourselves in the face and admit is a problem, uh, it's, it's my generation and, and I'm getting old enough where I'm starting to think about, you know, my, the next generation after me, you know, yep. so yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a well, that's thing. what life is about. Okay. Everyone, we should make it uh, financially. Um, uh, you should have the opportunity here in Vermont to get a job that pays well enough so that you can have a family, buy a house, buy a car, get married. Everybody, that's that's life. That's you know what what living is all about: sharing your life with someone and being able to afford a decent life. So, um, I, I hope for that for every Vermont kid. And anybody who chooses to move here too, because of course we do want to continue to attract new new residents. Yeah, um, for sure. Were, did anybody <laughs> else have any other questions? I know I kind of asked a million, uh, Carolyn, which thank you for answering all of them for me. Um, I didn't know though, since I see a few people on. I'm gonna, uh, I can't see anyone. Could I ask a question? Of course, Rich. This. Do you want to introduce yourself, Hello. Rich? Yes. Hello, Rich? Yes. Yeah, Rich Bailey. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to run this technical stuff. I'm not sure what's going on with the camera. But we can hear you. Uh, any idea any idea how many and I'm trying to figure out uh, I think a big problem is this pencil everyone there's a lot of people getting 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a year in a in the state pen uh, from the pension plan does anybody know how many people are getting that huge amount and how did they get that kind of benefit i mean that just seems outrageous for a little state like this if if that's true i don't know for sure if that's true but if it is it's part of the negotiated agreement uh, I have heard that a lot of employees try to put in a lot of overtime to build up their average salary toward the end of their working life. Um, it, that's uh, because of a stipulation in the agreement. Uh, so that may be one thing that this table full of people I talked about early on in our meeting would want to look at as far as the agreement goes when they come to re renegotiate the uh, the structure of that retirement agreement um, we we might say well we could we could afford that for a while but now we're at a point where we can't afford that anymore so um, and again when you change the 
um, the agreement like that, what you do is you start with people who are entering because it's a 30 year contract. The people who are already collecting or who are uh, vested to the point where they're counting on that salary at the end of their work, you can't change that. It's been, been agreed. And, um, but you can change the one for people who haven't started to work for you yet. Uh, that's where I see the change could happen. And uh, Richard, you may be right about the, the high amount of their um, pension payout. I, I honestly don't know. Is that information we'd be able to find out if these people put the table? I, 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 to me, that's just bleeding the system horribly. I don't know at, if it's public point, information. Oh. I don't think that's public information, but uh, possibly. I think you can't find out. Um, you can't find out as an individual. Like you can't look up Joey Smith and find out what he's making right. as a retiree. But you could look up right. a state snowplow driver, right. thirty years, and see what he's making. You know the the generic right. description. I think you could do that. Yeah. And where you could you could who uh, that would be available at the treasurer's office. Give them a call. <laughs> yes, you can actually, they have a link to it um, and you can go through and see what every state employee is making um, per hour. So it's it's pretty interesting um, to scroll through and see. Well, Richard, I mean, you would have thought a... somebody would have put a cap on it. So. Well, <laughs> that, that's, well, I'm sorry, I think go we, ahead. We need to have that honest discussion with one another because we're at the point now where, of course, as I've said, they're, they're um, taking money out of the general fund to, to pay out the right. retirement fund. That can't continue because the general fund is not for that. The general fund right. is for other things. Right. Yes, yeah, so. Yep, well, thank you, I just, uh, it just, it just blows my mind that people can retire from the state. Not everybody, but if they're making a hundred K a year. That's... I understand. Yeah. Okay. But, we appreciate your call. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's that. All right. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Carolyn, are you, uh, able to address any of the concerns uh, that uh, we have about funding these state colleges and what you think might happen going forward? Uh, I know the state, no, I don't, I don't know enough about it to tell you where they're headed, but I know the state board just uh, met recently. Um, in fact, uh, the, the legislators who were on that state board missed a, a couple of days of, um, meetings at the legislature in order to wrap up their year on the state college board. Uh, I, I know they are aware of all the problems there. Um, I think this year is going to be uh, it's going to be a, a year that really matters for them. If they can't make ends meet this year, uh, I think some of them are going to have to close or you'll see more mergers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a significant year because the children are um, the students, not children, they're, they're um, having to choose between having uh, classes on Zoom like this or uh, going, going to class, uh, you know, staying in their dorm room and having Zoom classes in their dorm room. And it's not, it's not the college like we imagine it. Uh, so we're, we're about to face a, a big change. So I don't really know enough, Tom, to make a, an educated statement about that. Sorry. I mean, that is a huge thing that we do have to focus on as well, um, because there is the commitment, just as we've discussed that to our retirees, we've made that legal contract. There is yeah. the law that says that we will be funding those and our state colleges have been underfunded and we have to truly find ways um, but in addition to that, not only the funding, really, Tom, we need to look at how do we get our students to move and come to these colleges, but then we have such a high, um, we don't really have a high graduation rate, and we don't really have a high retention rate. So we're finding kiddos who come up, they do a year or two, and then they leave. So how do we keep people, A, all four years, 
or B, how do yeah. you get people to actually go through to graduation? So they kind of mm. go hand in hand, but if we're not funding it, we're not going to get the, the candidates we, or the kiddos we want. And I shouldn't yeah. say kiddos, young adults. <laughs> there are other t kinds of job training that young people may want to consider. Uh, nursing, um, uh, working as a plumber or fixing a furnace or something like that. Those kinds of jobs are uh, well-paying jobs. Uh, running a, an x-ray machine, um, there, lots of skill is involved in those kinds of things and the pay is decent. Uh, right. So uh, other young people want to consider other kinds of jobs too that take some training beyond high school, maybe not a four-year degree. Right. That four-year degree, they tell you, is very important. And if you are not lucky yeah. enough to have a family who has saved for your time for it, uh, you, those student loans can catch up, and you're paying those off for thirty years. So for sure, yeah. Um, but I appreciate you jumping on today, tonight. It's tonight um, with <laughs> me uh, and discuss the pension because like I said it is a huge thing that we do have to focus on um, and address especially like you said in this coming year with COVID not only that but our entire budget I mean we do have to you know we need a balanced budget we, we can't be saying yeah we're going to get this money from somewhere or expect money that we don't have so mm -hmm. before we start spending more and more on other new adventures we should maybe make sure we're, we're following through with the obligations we've already set for the state yeah um, your listeners may be uh, interested to know that um, if you look on the on the web under the um, Joint Fiscal Office, the Vermont State Legislative Joint Fiscal Office, you can find information on the most recent budget that was passed and uh, how much was appropriated for various uh, sections of government. Um, and that, that information is uh, often enlightening. I'm also interested in, and I printed it off and I've got to sit down and read that one as well as uh, I see that on the 25th of September, so what was it, uh, Friday, a 28 page taxes, new taxes ones, and one talking about new taxes got posted up. So um, not on the joint oh. fiscal office, but one of the laws oh. they put through. Great, Just should be interesting. Yeah, yeah, super. <laughs> In some of the work that I was doing uh, on the platform committee, I uh, took the opportunity to, to review the Democrat platform for the state of Vermont. And, uh, you know, it's, it, there's no program they don't like. And uh, it occurred to me that if we initiated all the programs that they uh, suggest on their platform, uh, we'd have to pay a whole lot more taxes or have to have a whole lot more revenue. Uh, so it concerns me moving forward that on the one hand, we are in a state that where revenue is so hard to come by. And on the other hand, uh, we have plans that seem to be, you know, completely out of line with what's really realistic in a state like Vermont. So, uh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess the, the, we'll wrap this up then. Unless um, final thoughts from you, Miss Carolyn. Uh, as I said before, be sure to vote. Uh, this is a really important election. We need to have you there and cast your vote uh, either by mail or in person, however you want to do it. Every Vermonter who's registered is going to have the opportunity to cast their vote by mail. Make sure that happens or go in person. Um, take a look at my website if you want, carolynbrannigan.com. You can get in touch with me on that website. So send me a, 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 an email or the, the campaign phone number is there too. You can give me a call. I'll, I'll be watching for your messages. Yes. And you do have a really great video just as an aside about jam. You were making jam and I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> what do you talk about sugar? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sugar is like the, you know, the money that we use to build the retirement fund. If you don't have exactly the right amount of sugar in that jam, it's not going to set. You're not going to have a fund that will work. So uh, anyway, we, were, we had fun with that one. Yes, perfect. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. 
And thank you to everyone who hopped on today, asked some important questions, as well as then those who will get the chance to review this. And if we do get new questions, Carolyn, um, I will definitely forward them on to you for, for your okay. review. I'll watch for them. Awesome. Thanks very much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Good luck.